All right, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about soybeans. Um, I actually have a couple questions I'm gonna start out with for you to think about as we go through this discussion or video. And um, maybe you know some of these answers and can answer them and see what you come up with as I go through some different um, topics on soybeans. So the first thing is we're gonna discuss why soybeans are unique. Um, then we're gonna go through three unique um, products from soybeans and how each one of those is used. And then what does it mean that soybeans, peanuts and turnips are rhodogen rich foods? Hmm. All right, so a little bit about soybeans. So soybeans are unique because they're unusually complete for a protein. Um, so they've got all nine essential amino acids, and um, there is one thing you need to note about this, though, is there's something called a limiting amino acid. And the limiting amino acid is basically the amino acid that's in the lowest quantity in, um, you know, a complete protein. So when you're evaluating protein quality, um, you might hear... It being said, the limiting amino acid for soybeans is methionine. So something just to keep uh, in note, if you do Google soybeans and methionine, um, I saw a lot of studies that they were doing, particularly looking at like animal feed, um, but you know, maybe the difference in two groups of rats where one, they just feed them the soybean product food, and then one, they have the soybean product and methionine added in and some of the benefits um, because of adding that extra methionine. So you'll see that um, actually in the agriculture injury industry a little bit more, is um, supplementing something else in addition to the soybean feed that they have is adding in that methionine because it is the limiting amino acid. So do remember that. Um, so the three soy protein products that we're gonna discuss today is the first one is soy flour. Soy flour is 50% protein. Um, they basically um, haven't removed a whole lot from it, they've just ground up the soybean, um, not a whole lot of processing um, compared to the other two products, and it is a gluten-free product. The second product is protein concentrate. So the protein concentrate is 70% protein, and they basically retain some of the fiber from the soy flour um, in the protein concentrate. They removed some of the carbohydrates, but kept some of that fiber in there as well. Um, so you'll see soy concentrates in different baked good products, um, breakfast cereals. You'll also see it in the meat and poultry, poultry industry a little bit, um, adding that back, adding that into some products. And then, um, it's also used in pet food. So protein concentrate. Um, the third is protein isolate. So protein isolates are greater or equal to 90% protein. Um, so this is our highest uh, bang for our buck. So we've got a lot of protein in this one. Um, this one is used heavily by the food industry. Um, why? Uh, basically, protein isolates, um, they provide some functional properties to food. They add some texture, um, but they're a way to save money. Now you know why. Um, so the uh, product that has been branded is called TVP, and that's what these um, food industries are using um, as a textured vegetable protein. So what they'll do is they'll add TVP into maybe ground beef, and now they've got ground beef and some textured vegetable protein, and they can make it go a little bit further um, as a meat extender is what uh, I read it to be called. Uh, and typically you'll see this in institutions that maybe are on a little bit more of a financial crunch, like prisons, school systems, um, those kind of places where maybe they don't have as big of a budget and they want to um, make some of their products go a little bit further by adding the TVP uh, soy isolate protein product. Um, Let's see, this also is um, used as an, to enhance moisture retention in products and used as an emulsifier. 
Um, the protein isolate is a little bit different from the other two products because it has a very neutral flavor and um, has less of a gassy effect with it. So that is our three soy protein products, flour, concentrate, and isolates. Now, I asked you earlier in the video about groitrogen rich foods. What is that? Basically, um, soybeans, turnips, and peanuts are all groitrogen rich. And what this does is it's a substance um, that's in these uh, products that absorb or use um, iodine, iodine. So they, sorry, they block absorption or the use of iodine in the body. Um, so groitrogen rich, um, I kind of think about, um, you know, groiter and uh, um, some of the different thyroid issues that people have. And um, maybe you know somebody who they can't have groitrogen rich foods um, because of a thyroid issue. Um, uh, but that's a different topic. But just kind of note, uh, gordogen rich soybeans blocks absorption or the use of iodine in the body. Um, and iodine is directly connected to the thyroid function as well. So uh, kind of keep that in mind or a way to remember gordogen rich blocks absorption of iodine. So that's all I have for soybeans today. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions or anything else to add or anything else that might be important. Um, to note for soybeans or methionine or anything that I talked on. Um, and thanks for watching.